We're scaring the hoes. We got a whole album here. This looks really cool. I like the cover art. It's really nice. It's really dope. Um, it looks like some black exploitation chase scene almost. It looks dope. Lean beef patty, step a pig, scaring the hoes, garbage pail. Whoa. Jack Harlow combo meal sounds like it's gonna be hilarious. One fear I have going into this album is Danny Brown tweeted like making fun of people who are making their issues with the mixing on this album known i hope it ain't gonna be one of those a24 pretentious reasons for why the mixing is bad if the mixing is just bad like i hope that's not the case but we're gonna see we're gonna see lean beef patty is the first track we already heard it unreleased but we're about to hear the fully released song right now lean beef patty number one let's go uh, sounds a little bit better but it sounds the same Still, till this day, really, really like the way that sample is used. I like the way it's chopped up. It's real creative. Band camp cover JPEG mafia hose scaring Danny. Let me see what they talking about on band camp. <laughs> Quite, who's who's Kim and who's and who's uh, mixing? Like I said, it's. It's still not the greatest on Danny's voice. Step a pig is number two. Hold on. I like that bar. Colin Cap like free agent. I like that. I don't know if it's a. Pe it's definitely more of a JPEG Mafia thing where it's like, dude has this uncanny ability to make the most awkward of of like assortment of music sound pleasing to the ear um like these melodies it's not the right word that i'm using but they just sound juicy it's almost like making vegetables taste good lush and colorful extremely colorful I just mad people love me for me while they put on the front so nobody knows don't like when i talk like this listen to the way this track starts and then listen to the way it ends that's the adventure that i want to take on every and it won't be for every artist, obviously. But there are certain artists, it's like, I know for a fact the destination is not going to be anywhere near the starting point. And I love that about his music. How do you fit that much into a three and a half minute song? Scaring the Hoes is track number three. Like, what the fuck is that? I know what it is, but it's just like, like why use that? Why, why, why do you use that and think, how does this, how, how am I going to make something that just sounds bad? sound great let me take the ugliest thing that i can think of and make niggas look at it is if it's mona fucking lisa who wasn't that great anyway to look at if you think about it but still now nah, nah, look at it just close your eyes listen to this song you're at a jpeg mafia and danny brown concert you look into the sea of people in the crowd and you see nothing you see nothing but 23 and 24 year old white girls with green and blue hair. Isn't that the dream? I lost you? Okay. Cool. Anything that isn't Drake, when someone listens to anything that isn't Drake, that song embodies what they think anything that isn't Drake sounds like. But honestly, that will scare the hoes. It scares me. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's nice. And I think it's incredibly creative to take something just, that just sounds so ugly and think, oh, how can I make this sound great? How can I make this rhythmic? How can I make this work for a song? I think that's beautiful direction and foresight. However, I'm never playing that shit. Out loud, in the whip, inside. I Like, that shit would give me night terrors. But if this was the backdrop, I knew I was going to die. I knew I was going to die if I listened to this in the background. Garbage Pail Kids at track number four. <laughs> Eat your ass like I'm cannabis. <laughs> Hold on. This is the definition of a nigga who can't dress making every fit work for him. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's like literally background music for Courage the Cowardly Dog. And I know that sounds like a diss, but it's not. It's not. Like, whenever I would turn on Cartoon Network or 
any show late night and I just woke up in the middle of the night and I saw a show that seemed a little bit more, I won't say abstract, but had something going on in the scene that I could just completely didn't understand. It literally made me feel like I was waking up in the middle of a nightmare. And that's what some of this musical backdrop feels like it would be playing, you know, if, as they're illustrating like this weird cartoon terroristic character. But aside from that, I really do feel like this is, you know, a nigga with no style being stylish, a nigga with no no drip, uh, still having a, a fashion sense. It's weird how he makes it work. Um, you know that these are not clothes or assortments that you would ever put together yourself. But for a fact, when you see him wearing it, when you see them putting it on, it just works. Um, I love that vocal sample as well. Fentanyl tester at number five. No, I'm just saying, man. Uh. Is it the car? Hey, that's milkshake? If this part weren't in the song, I never would have known. We're just going into the next track. Version of the Super Bowl. I like it. I like it. Like I know who he is, and I'm looking like, who are you? Hold on, did I find a JPEG Mafia song I can finally work out to? That's not the only one. But this is the most appropriate one. I'm feeling the energy right now. I feel like I can do anything. I'm not going to, obviously. You fused all my elements of other things that I've been doing my whole life. Consuming the Super Bowl when I was young, you know. Coming up on, you know, gym, gym rat routine. Listening to y'all too. Stepping in like I'm one of the players on the NFL, even though I don't watch it, it feels it feels great. I feel amazing. How can I lose? Who loses when this is the intro to the to the to the game? Who who, who loses? Shut your bitch ass up. I don't rap circles around niggas. I do figure eights. Ring for your niggas. I don't rap circles around niggas. I do figure eights. Isn't an eight just like two circles? I didn't mean to be that. I I just I did the, I did the thing he tweeted. I just did the thing. Shut your bitch ass. Kill the vibe. All right, my bad. Oh, that's nice. Drops got that weight to him. And that every time the drums are on with these songs, it's just like constant. I just feel like I'm being battered and beaten into the ground with a mullet. You know whack-a-mole? When you whack the mole. <laughs> Wait, no, I wasn't ready. What? I know that's not Michael Jackson. Bro, I literally don't know who I'm supposed to be focused on right now. Who am I supposed to be giving my attention to? I'm being dragged in so many different directions at the exact same time. This, if anything, is the multiple listen song because I really got to figure out there are a lot of records that I'll listen to and there's one part that attaches me to the song and I can sometimes trick my mind into believing the other things aren't there or don't contribute to the song enough to be paid attention to, but that's not the case here. I'm literally being stretched out right now. I think the Danny Brown verse could have been a little shorter after some reflection. I think the Danny Brown verse could have been a little bit shorter. The Michael Jackson sample is beautiful, it's great. It's unexpected, it's gorgeous. It's also very distracting. Every other sample that I've seen them use so far has been really creative and very interesting. This one, I feel like it's just let it play, which again, there's nothing wrong with. It's like a cloud over the song. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Yeah, I'm just saying it's like a cloud over the song. Number nine, Kingdom Hearts with Red Veil. What? Okay. Wait, there's still a Redville feature. I want to see what he sounds like. This is crazy. That was fantastic. That was great. Is it weird that this sounds like a Christmas song? Maybe that's just because of the bells right now, but I really feel like the spirit, like the holiday spirit listening to this song for whatever reason. We start off at level 100, I feel like. I'm already in the clouds, I'm already near heaven when that song starts and we finish the same way, you know? I don't really feel like there's an ascension. We just are above, we're on cloud nine the entire song. Go to God Loves You at track number 10. Go ahead girl, just bless me. If you're on your period, call me Moses. Cause I'm about to split back 
That is what gospel music would be to me if it wasn't boring, you know? I like Jesus. Colorful, it's not it's a lot less boring, it's a personality to it. I like that. And you you can always get me with a gospel sample of some preacher or the choir going crazy. You can always get me with that. So I like that. I like that a lot. Next track is Run the Jewels. Track number eleven. It's only a minute. Most my age is scared, won't come outside. It's making me cry. Tap step up and get shit on like they in Dubai. Tell it no lie. He did not just say that. Wait a minute. What the fuck? That's really good. I would love to see what this album would be if they animated it. You know, like what Kenny Beats and Denzel Curry did for Unlocked. I would love to see that idea, you know, that concept thrown onto this album. Because it sounds really, really animated. And I see just a lot of chase scenes, especially with this one. Um, just make the track a little bit longer. A whole scene could definitely be made. Uh, Jack Carlo Combo Meal at number 12. Sounds classy restaurant i come in walk past the waiter who's the waiter jack harlow he doesn't come to my table i get the metaphorical the spirituality of what you see he said y'all i can't fuck with you niggas you let jack carlo sell you chicken he just said what niggas like me have been saying for years these niggas are ass. They say the same shit the black ones do, and they get popular for what? Saying nothing new, nothing different. Same nigga in white skin. You know this, we know this. Stop. Every year, same transition, same personality, same voice. No difference. Number one on the billboard. Same nigga made the same song 12 years ago. Oh, well, he just sound different. It's his swag. It's his this. Shut the fuck up. I know what's really going on. Oh, that he said a lot with that one little line. Danny Brown, he might have it. He might have it for me. You get your city's crackers and keeps you, you when you black as a regular you bad. Yeah, yeah. Your path is looking like shit. Your bag is That was a great song. And Danny Brown said a fucking mouthful. And when I said that, niggas called me racist. Do I give a fuck? Absolutely not. Suck my dick. Oh, Heaven on Earth is the next track. Yeah, my bitch still got beat in the heart like this. For Try me, look at me. Keep going. Have we just rolled through this whole album, bro? I feel like I feel like I haven't been even on here that long. Like Everybody take a moment, raise your hands for Jesus. Look your neighbor in the eye and tell him you love him. This shit fire in. That shit fire as fuck. Oh my god, that song was amazing. Ho, I like ho. No, he not talking about me. I already know what you're gonna say. It's not about me. Ho, Jack Harlow combo meal, run the jewels is a fun little adventure. God loves you, which he does. He loved me too. Kingdom Hearts Key featuring Redville. A little bit of an underwhelming Redville feature so far, but not bad. Orange Juice Jones. I still gotta get used to that sample being so loud in the beginning and throughout the song. Shut your bitch ass up, Muddy Waters. Perfect. Thought that was great. Fitting all tester, garbage pill kids, scaring the hoes. The only one that I'm not a huge fan of is scaring the hoes because I'm one of the hoes on that track and I'm scared. That's really it. That's really it. We got the last track here right now. Where you get your coke from? Sounds like it would have been a great song for Pusha T. Big missed opportunity, but we move. Y'all serious? Did you just spoil? Did you just spoil? Did you just spoil? This is great. So there's no push the teeth feature. It's only it's only it's only 49 seconds of the song left. You live and you breathe for no reason. Some of y'all niggas just like you just hear you just taking up space. That's really what it is, and it's like all the other niggas in the world, bro. All the resources that other people could receive and the benefits and the dividends and the and the fucking, you know, financial support and assistance, the jobs that could be opened up, you know. And niggas like you are the ones that are here. I just think about that every time like one of y'all niggas go in the chat. Like I really just be thinking, like, what the fuck is the point for some of you niggas? That was just the most unnecessary fucking lie I think I've ever heard in my life. And for no reason other than to just just for what? <laughs> 
I don't even give a fuck about the last song. I don't care. Extremely creative. Extremely creative. Very, very resourceful. I love when you take from all, like, it, it don't even seem like they had that much at their disposal when you think about the budget of the, you know, uh, success. If you draw from the success of a JPEG Mafia and, and, and a Danny Brown, like, clearly they've had a lot of success, just not commercially. But you wouldn't expect this level of... I guess attempt or what the fuck is the word you know this level of exploration from artists who don't have that much in terms of resources at their disposal you know what I'm saying they don't it, there, it's, there's, there's no incentive pushing this kind of material I guess is what I'm trying to say there's no reason for them to do something like this financially speaking and this is why I commend these artists so much for attempting these things because it just takes such a creative mind so much foresight and you really have to care about the art I'm guaranteeing you especially with some of the samples used there's probably going to be far less or not far less but just not as big of a recoup off this just because we want the music to sound as great as humanly possible the amount of effort that went into this for the payout to not be that great just from musically speaking alone i just think that's such a it's such a great it's such a big sacrifice i like the verses for the most part a lot of funny one-liners i still got to go back and catch everything it's only so much you can catch during the first listen. I'm listening to this through speakers as well. Some of the mixing uh, that I thought would be an issue based off some of the memes that I had seen about this album before it had before I had heard it. Um, not as daring or as, as jarring, you know, or as distracting as I would have expected. Based off that meme that Danny Brown posted in the beginning, I would have thought that they would have been far worse. So I'm glad it's not that bad. I don't think there's a single track on this bitch that I don't like. Except scaring the hoes. Like I said, scaring the hoes, I'm never playing that again. But they just did something just because they wanted to do it. Just to see what would happen. And I like that. I like that. I do. I like that. I like just trying something new just because with an artist that you respect that you also have access to. I wish more people would do it. We would get some great fucking collabs out of the process um, if people were more open to it. Maybe there's some fear involved. I know people get threatened and things like that. But I honestly think if they just, you know, prioritize the fans listening experience over over you know what i'm saying their own ego and pride we could get some amazing music consistently consistently i still don't know why 50 cent and fucking and fucking the game in their prime couldn't have made a whole collab album just make this it's all about the music to me there's some rappers right now that i think can make some amazing music together don't what, what, what's the ego for at the end of the day if your song number one that's a big big enough ego for me extremely creative